Hey guys, this is Laura from Thrifty Wifey, and I'm going to go over a little bit today on how to build up a stockpile, how to maintain a stockpile, some of the basic products that you're going to find, and why even have a stockpile, what's the point of it. The reason people have a stockpile is to build, to buy when the prices are good, so they have the item for later. Good example, my husband uses Gillette Fusion Pro Glot, that's, that's all he likes, that's all he uses. If he used, let's say, one week, I, had, I would have to buy at full price for a month, which would be... $40 when they're $10 a piece. It's quite a bit of money. Now, once a month, typically PNG releases a $4 off coupon. I compare that with a $5 reward at one of the drugstores and I get them for $0.99. Cents. That's a $36 difference. That's a huge amount of savings off of just razors alone. That's, you know, that's a water bill. That's an internet bill. That's um, a house phone bill. That's, that's a bill covered right there just off of that one product. So, I mean, just imagine off of just razors, if you added in toothpaste and toothbrush and body wash and all this stuff, how much money you would really be saving yourself every month just by stocking up, just by buying when it's a super good price. Um, now, there is a limit and there's a way to do your stockpile in moderation, and I recommend that. When you go out to the store, you don't need to go out and buy 10 or 20 of the product. You don't need 10 or 20 body washes. You don't need 10 or 20 things of aspirin. You don't need all that. To most families, it's going to go to waste before you can even use it. So in all reality, you're wasting money, even though you might have gotten it for 50 cents. You know, if you bought four of them that you're not going to use and they expire before you can use it, that's $2 wasted. That can add up easily and quickly with your stock if you just buy just to buy and you buy in extreme amounts. Another reason that clearing the shelves is a no-no. You know, let's say you go in there and you get 20 products. That's great. Mind you, four, six, ten of them, whatever, might go to waste because you bought too many. But you also have four or five, how many other people that came in behind you that might have only wanted one or two of the item for their family. And, you know, you've taken that out of their hand just because you wanted to get an extreme amount. So buy moderately. Buy what you need. Buy what you need, what you, you can use, or what you can donate. Those are the three big things. If you don't need it, if your family's not going to use it, and you don't know someone you can donate it to, you're wasting money. Even if it's a great deal, you're wasting money on it. So that's something you really need to keep in mind when you're starting a stock. Don't just do it just to acquire the products and to see how many products you can get because you will soon realize after about six months that you're throwing tons and tons of products away. And like I said, that's a waste. So there are ways to do it and there are ways to buy moderately. I would say it takes about two months to build up a decent stockpile. And like I said, that's buying moderately. It's buying two or three of the products or whatever it is. Now, I get asked a lot, how much should your family stock up on? Well, that varies by family. I mean, in all reality, it varies per family. If you have, you know, six children, of course, you're going to need a bigger stock than, let's say, a family with just a husband and a wife. You're going to need a larger stock because you're going to have more people going through it. And this is basically just what you learn as you go along. You realize, well, let's say you ran out of a stock early. Okay, I need to buy, you know, stock up on more of those, you know, later on down the road or whatever you need to do, you know your family and you'll realize how much they go through these products. Um, rotation is a big thing on a stockpile. Say you have, now this goes for groceries and it goes for you know the drugstore products, the medicine and things like that. Let's say you have you know five things of aspirin. When you buy them, take the new products and stick them in the back. Let the old products at the front of the stock. It's rotating. It's the same thing that the stores do. If you go in the store, you can look behind the new pro behind the products at the front of the um, shelf, and you'll find newer expiration dates at the back. That's how they stock the things to get the old ones out and get the new ones in. Same thing you need to do with your stockpile. <coughs> I've had a lot of people suggest to take um, a permanent marker and write the expiration date on your on that product, you know, in large letters, so you can look and you can see and you automatically know when that expires what product needs to be used first. That's another great idea. Don't be afraid to write all over your products. They're your products. They're in your house. So there are a bunch of different ways to make sure that no items go to waste. Um, I get asked a lot if I donate my products when I've showed my stockpile. My products are donated quite regularly, not only to family and friends like I told you, but um, they get donated quite a bit to women's shelters and things like that. So like I said, nothing's ever wasted. And if you find a product and Let's say you stocked up on four of them, but you realize, okay, I don't really like that product, or, you know, I'm not really going to be able to go through all of these. Take them and donate them. There are tons of people out there who could use these products, people that don't know how to coupon or are in a situation to where couponing is not a possibility for them.
they need those products. There are tons of people out there that can use those products. So, you know, that's another thing to consider, but that does not, still does not mean that you need to go and clear 20 products off the shelf. So I don't want anyone to think that there is ever a reason to go clear the shelf out because there's not. If you decide that you want 10 or 20 of one product that's on sale one week, go to a couple of different stores. Um, hit the sale at the beginning and one at the end. Get a rain check at the end. If their products are out of stock, when you go back for the end of the sale, get a rain check. This quality, you know, this works for most sales. Not some of the rewards it does not work for, but most sale products you can go at the end. If they're not in stock, you can get a rain check to come back later. Um, or you can go to the last day of the sale and you know, you know, well, everyone else is typically coming out what they need. You know, I can get a little bit more this time. So are there are ways to stock up and to get more products. Um, but there are ways to do it without just shelf clearing. Now the difference between like I said, the difference between a regular stockpile, this is mine, it's two shelves, it's very moderate, um, the products are rotated regularly, I do not have any wasteful products, I've never wasted, I say never, when I first started couponing I got overexcited and I didn't know, you know, I didn't have anybody to show me the ropes, so I learned within a couple of months, okay, I'm buying too much, I need to cut it back because I'm wasting products. Um, but a regular stockpile for me is this two shelves. Now I tell everybody you need to limit your stockpile, you need to you know, keep your stockpile in check. Don't let your stockpile overrun your life. Don't keep it, you know, let products run into your kids' room and your hallway and your living room and all that stuff. Your guests don't want to see that. Your your spouse and your children don't want to see that. Control your stockpile. Don't let it overrun your life. And it gets much easier to handle at that point. So this is my stock. You can probably see, um, just going over what you would see in a normal stockpile. Um, I've got toothpaste, razors, feminine products, shampoo, conditioner, body wash, toilet paper, all these products that we use regularly on a regular basis and it's constantly rotated through. Um, and you might, well, if you can see, well, I only have typically four or five of each product and a lot of these are built up over different sales. So when the Nivea body wash was on sale, I bought a couple of those and then the Dove body wash went on sale, so I got that. And then the Dial body wash was a money maker at Publix a little while back, so I bought some of those. All those little sales buying two or three of those products have gradually added up to where I have a decent stock that we're covered on body wash for the next year. In all reality, my family is covered on body wash for the next year. So there are ways to do it. There are ways to stock up and there are ways to do it moderately and to do it responsibly. So always keep that in mind and don't try to go out and build a stockpile overnight. Don't go clearing shelves. Don't go getting products just to get them. Be sensible. Be a sensible couponer. Be a sensible stockpiler. If you whatever you want to call that and you know just know just keep in mind that the main reason behind a stockpile is to support your family it's saving you tons of money in the long run just by buying the products when they're on sale so that is it if you have any questions just ask below the video and I will be happy to answer them